you are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you to you as my husband. Thank you. I, um, I love this opportunity tonight. So I'm grateful uh, for the tabernacle. I'm grateful for uh, family. Uh, sometimes my sisters pop on. I'm grateful for friends. Yes, as you said, maybe some high school friends that we can connect that way with. Amen. Friends that came here tonight, bless you in Jesus' name. So um, I just am so grateful tonight for the Word of God. Amen. Do you have your Bibles or your phone with you at least? Probably. So, um, yeah, so I'm calling tonight uh, prayer teaching, and where would we be without the Word of God, right? Where would you be? You don't have to answer that, but sometimes we can think about where would we be if the Word of God hadn't come into our lives and enlightened us, amen? So, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the Word became flesh and you dwell among us. We behold your glory tonight. All of us here tonight at the tabernacle, we are slowing down right now to look into your love eyes. Your eyes are beautiful, Jesus. And we want to tell you tonight from the tabernacle, we love you. Can you tell the Lord tonight that you love him? We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We call you Lord of our life. We call you the love of our life. And tonight, as the Spirit just um, will move here tonight in different ways, I just want everyone to cast your care right now on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God says, cast all your care on the Lord, for He cares for you. You're a caring God. You're a loving God. And uh, just let go of the burdens of the day. Um, can we all let go tonight? Let go, let go of disappointments, right? Let's just face that life isn't probably right now what we thought it would be, is it? Let go of it. Let it go. Thank you, Lord. Give it to the Lord. Let's cast our cares, our worries, our anxieties onto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We cast our, our children, our grandchildren, all the relationships that we have. We cast the love of our families on you, Lord, knowing that we love them, but Lord, how much you love them. Thank you, Lord. Your love is great. Thank you, Lord, you're moving tonight in wonderful ways. And Lord, we receive your word. Lord, we're always in a win-win situation when we can share the word of God. Thank you for the word. We pray in Jesus' name. Can you all shout amen? Amen. Sometimes we like to shout. Sometimes we like to uh, just encourage the speaker up here. Shout amen. Amen. Okay. So um, anyway, what's on my heart is Psalm 112, like I already said. But I, I was thinking about um, what God has done in our lives what God has done in each one of your lives. And um, let's see, I brought a few pictures. Uh, first of all, I put one of the pictures up on, um, on Facebook. Yeah. So this is 1971. I have no idea why I have that T-shirt on, but anyway, that was what I was doing that day. So <laughs> I'm somebody's big brother. And, um, but, you know, I said on Facebook, I said I was smiling in that picture, but I was really... Um, just troubled and worried and frail and searching. And um, so I remember being in the hallway, and you can go to the next picture. These I'm not going to linger on, but the next picture, yeah. So uh, that was Matthew's Hall, room 359. <laughs> um, any decorating there was all attributed to my roommate. I had nothing and did nothing. So I just was a partaker, but a um, little bit unorganized and wondering why I was getting my picture taken. But um, again, at this point in my life, I was 19 years old. I still have that shirt. It's in my house somewhere. Can you believe it? SDSU. And, um, but I was at a place where I, did not, I was not born again. And I had a roommate, and um, I want to say this was the other picture of me was October, and um, it was three months after that that the power of the Word of God came into my life. Now tonight, as the power of the Word of God comes into our li lives, it, we're illuminated. All of a sudden, we can see clearer. All of a sudden, something that was bound us up, or um, here I was bound up with a lot of things, but you can go to the next picture. This is Gordon Brown. 
He's in heaven. <laughs> so we will see him in heaven. And uh, shortly after those pictures that I just showed, I went to a Christian coffee house in Pierce, South Dakota. And um, I could no longer go other places. They were too dark. I couldn't handle it. And I just thought, I've, I've got to find peace. I've got to find what my purpose is in life. And Gordon Brown found me um, in the coffee house, and he came over to me. And he said one, especially one word that changed my life. And he visited with me a little bit. But he said, have you ever personally, can we all say that word out loud? Personally. God is a personal God. He's a one-on-one. -on -one. He's intimate. And I'd never heard that word before. He said, have you ever personally ask Jesus to come into your life and be your friend. I said, I had no idea. He said, I knelt down like a very good Catholic. I don't really remember that. But I knelt down and I prayed. He said, Jeannie, it's as simple as ABC. Admit you're a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And confess in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Well, that is definitely what happened that night. And then over the years, we were able to visit with Gordon Brown, and um, he had a glorious homecoming, and he's in heaven rejoicing. Was that all I had? Let's see. Well, there's one more, right? Yeah. So I want to, this is an inside cover of one of the Bibles, and I'm not going to read all those, but um, it talks about Psalm 84, 11, and that God is a covenant God. And... I'm not going to read it from there, but I'm going to say what I say because it's the Word of God that changes us. The Bible up there, it says, no good thing. Can we, can we all say no good thing? No good thing will God withhold to those who walk uprightly. I mean, that is powerful right there. No good thing does the Lord withhold to those who walk, say it, uprightly. uprightly. Well, we're upright because Jesus is in us. Amen? And then I just, over the years, I... the covers torn, and all of you probably have a Bible like this too, don't you? That you wrote in, you remembered, you wrote a date, and you went back, and you, were, you encouraged yourself in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And these are some of the things I wrote, and um, we'll talk about some of these tonight, but um, here's some of the good things, and joy, and salvation, and freedom, and uh, fertility. Amen. Um, fortune, inheritance, abundance, riches, so um, I just wanted to pop that up there and um, just declare publicly uh, what the Lord does in people's lives. And it's all through the Word of God. I guess I didn't bring my great big heavy Bible to hold up and say, this is my Bible, I am what it says I am. But um, are you appreciating the Bible tonight? Yeah. Did you, anyone here today get a word from God today? Yeah, I saw hands go up. Uh, we need daily manna. We need, we need life. And uh, the Lord says that um, it's every day. Man shall not live by bread alone. We sure like our muffins and our bread, but man shall not live, you say it with me, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So tonight you will be blessed by a psalm that I have really loved for years. And as I looked at it, I just thought of, just like that cover in there, I just thought of different benefits that came just from one psalm. And this is Psalm 12, 112. And we're going to read it together up here. You guys can read it there. I'm going to read it from my notes here. But let's all read it out loud and um, read it with authority. Amen. Um, read it like you believe it. Amen. Psalm 112. Verse 1, praise the Lord, hallelujah, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who fears, reveres, and worships the Lord, hallelujah, who delights greatly in his commandments. There's 10 verses here. Verse 2, his spiritual offspring shall be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright, say it. Uh, verse 3, prosperity, say it. His righteousness endures forever. 
claim this one tonight. Light rises in the darkness for the upright, gracious, compassionate, and just who are in right standing with God. It is well. Can we say those three words two more times? It is well. One more time. With the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice, he will not be moved forever. Keep reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seven. He shall not be afraid of evil. Hallelujah. His heart is fixed, firmly fixed, trusting, leaning, confident in the Lord. Eight, his heart is established and steady. Amen. He will not be afraid while he waits to see the desire established on his adversaries. I like to think of that as spiritual adversaries. Amen. Because we have one enemy, and it's the devil. Um, please note in verse 7 and in 8, it's um, both of those say that uh, we're not going to be afraid. Amen. Amen. We're not afraid. We are not afraid. We will not fear. We will not be afraid of evil tidings. Verse 9, go ahead. He has distributed. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, honor. The wicked man will see it and be grieved and angry. He'll gnash his teeth and disappear in despair. The desire of the wicked shall perish and come to nothing. Again, I like to think of verse 10 as the devils and the demons rather than human beings. But, um, but anyway, um, there, there will be a payment. Uh, so, wow, isn't that a beautiful psalm? This is a prayer teaching tonight, and as I've gone through this, wow, I love the Word of God. <laughs> you know, with the Word of God, we can declare things like this. Yes, for our lives, but yeah, us for no more. No, it's our Jerusalem. It's our Judea, our Samaria. And yes, by the grace of God to the uttermost ends of the earth, we can declare what God says. We can pray what God says. When a, a troubling thought comes about, let's face it, a child or a grandchild or whatever, maybe a friend, a neighbor, maybe a brother or a sister, we can go to what God says. What does God say? Well, this is what God says. And I have enjoyed the power of the Word of God for years, saying what God says, agreeing with God. And I know I've shared this with some of you that I remember one year um, walking into a church in Rapid City, South Dakota, and I was like, maybe I felt like I was two inches tall. Anyway, that's not true. But it, that's how we feel sometimes, like real small, insignificant, and even invisible. And I said something to uh, one of the leaders there, and I said something like that, what I just said to you. And he stopped me and he said, you need to agree with God. <laughs> that just pierced me like a sword. The word of God is like a sword. It's a two-edged sword in the hand of believers. And I thought, I'm going to agree with God. Amen. So let's look at verse 1. And um, I kind of, I love outlines. And so I have this divvied up into different outlines. But I'm going to start with, if you're taking notes, uh, number one is praise and reverence yield blessings. Praise and reverence. Now, everything else I'm going to say is uh, from these verses. Praise and reverence yield blessings. The first part of verse 1 is praise the Lord. We already said that, right? Praise the Lord. Can we all say that together? Praise, praise the Lord. Praise is powerful. Amen. Praise stills the avenger. What does that mean? It shuts the, the mouth of the enemy. We have one accuser of the brethren. And the Lord reminded me about this even this week. The devil is an accuser. He accuses God's people. <laughs> no, we don't want it. Day and night, it says. No, we can stop his voice because his sheep hear his voice. And we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We hear the voice of Jesus. And so praise stills the avenger. Jesus, what? Inhabits what? What is Jesus' address? It's praise. Amen. Now that's something to think about right there. God lives within our praise. This says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And even during prayer meeting um, at noon, Angeline was praying. And 
uh, it was so beautiful because I knew what I had written here, bless the Lord on my soul. And she was saying, I'm telling my soul to bless the Lord. I'm telling my emotions to bless the Lord. Isn't that what the Bible says? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Speak to yourself. Speak to yourself with psalms and songs and hymns, making melody in your heart to the Lord. So praise is powerful. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me, say it. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Can we say his name out loud? Jesus. Oh, your name is beautiful, Jesus. Your name is lovely, Jesus. His, his uh, name is sweeter than honey on the honeycomb. He satisfies our longing souls tonight. Maybe we've just felt shriveled up, shriveled up and uh, really dry. But there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God. Out of your innermost being tonight are flowing, come on, rivers of what kind of water is it? It's a living water. You're alive. You're not dead. You're not down. You're not discouraged. No, you are mighty in God. Mighty is your God, and he's greatly to be praised. And uh, these are just a few things. I wrote about that first phrase there, praise the Lord. At all times, say it with me if you know it, at all times, I will, his praise will continually be in my mouth. Are we living that? Talk to me. Talk to me. Are we, living, are we living that? His praise will continually be on my mouth. Just create that atmosphere of praise. And I, I want to say, I've been so encouraged by this. Watch God work. Watch God work. He is the God of the possible. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's move on to um, the second phrase. Bless the, blessed is the one who reveres the Lord and worships the Lord. Amen. Let's see. Is there more? Worships the Lord. Uh, Blessed is the one who reveres and worships the Lord, who delights, well, this is beautiful, delights what? Greatly? In his commandments. Um, to be blessed, I'm going to talk about that phrase. To be blessed means happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He brings us joy and gladness when we don't even deserve it, right? When we don't even think it's possible, his presence comes. And he brings clarity. There may be confusion or, you know, just something weighing us down. And Jesus comes. One word from God changes our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Um, that's all I wrote about that. Verse 2. Let's see. Is that? Oh, no, I did write some more. Yeah. Um, happy is the man who respects and worships the Lord. Fortunate. Can we all say fortunate? Prosperous and favorite of the Lord. Um, for, let's see. When we, uh, oh, and we sang it tonight. When we stand amazed at Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fortunate. Thank you, Lord. Prosperous. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. But now we sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Uh, the last part of that verse, blessed is the one, I love this part, who delights greatly in his commandments. Well, to me that says, blessed, you're blessed because you love the Bible. You are blessed because you love what God says. You are blessed because the living word is within your spirit. And you represent Jesus everywhere you go. Thy word have I hid in my heart, do you know it? That I might not sin against thee. Amen. We love the Bible. We greatly delight in his commandments. Loving the word of God and allowing his power and his word to change us brings glory. We carry his glory. We walk in his glory. The word lights up our path. Psalm 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto your feet. Do you need direction tonight? We all, we all need direction all the time, don't we, every day? The word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. Um, I love verse, or Proverbs 6, verse 20 through 24. If anyone wants these scriptures afterwards, I have a, a handout I'd be happy to give you. But uh, Proverbs 6, verse 24, basically in summary it says, the word of God will guide you when you walk. The word of God watches over you when you sleep. Thank you, Lord. I pray tonight for anyone who has trouble sleeping at night um, that the Word of God, it says in Proverbs 6, 20 through 24, 
the word of God watches over you while you sleep. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We lay down in peace and sleep. For you, O Lord, cause us to dwell in safety. Thank you, Lord, for uh, peace and sweet sleep. Um, when you wake up, the word of God will speak to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so the next verses, two and so on, are all based on, uh, really off of verse one, that blessed, happy, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man who loves the word of God. Amen. Okay, let's go to verse two. Generational blessings. Can we all uh, repeat that? Generational blessings. Now, as we um, look at these in a little more detail, think about who they would apply for in uh, maybe in a, a loved one's life or a family member. These are generational blessings. I think all of us know each other well enough to know that uh, generational curses have been broken off of our life. We're certainly not the people we used to be, but no, you are raised up in newness of life. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and you're, not the, you're the head and not the tail. Amen. You're above only, and say it, not beneath. Amen. You can do all things. Say it through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So there's generational blessings. Where would we be without the Lord? Verse 2. His descendants, and this means his offspring, say amen. His children, come on, yes, we care about our children, amen. We care about our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, our cousins, our aunts and uncles, my sisters, my brothers, amen. This says his descendants will be mighty. Where is this going to happen? His descendants will be mighty. Where? Where? One more time. On earth. Sure. Wow. We got our homes, our names written in the Lamb book of, Lamb's Book of Life. We have a home in heaven. But this says, his descendants will be mighty on earth. Can we say that out loud together? Mighty on earth. One more time. Mighty on earth. The generation, the children of the upright, everyone has family here. We all have family. It says, will be blessed. Our offspring will be mighty. Now, this is a lot of fun to, de to declare what God says, to agree with God. It says, mighty means champions. Come on, let's just declare it. Let's just believe it. Let's just see it before we see it. Our offspring, our children shall be champions. Hallelujah. It also means powerful. Our, our descendants are strong in the Lord. Our descendants are mighty here on earth. Yeah, hallelujah, heaven. But it says mighty where? On the earth, it says uh, mighty means valiant. Yes, thank you, Lord. Uh, there can do children. There can do grandchildren. There can do uh, relatives. It's our descendants. Amen. This is what God says. Another definition is warriors. That's a good word. They're not um, being pushed over or, or knocked down. No, they're warriors. Their offspring are mighty on the earth. These are irreversible, irrevocable blessings from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, your descendants are upright. Say amen. Your descendants are blessed. Say amen. Verse 3, provision, wealth, and riches. All of those are in verse 3. Can you believe it? That is amazing. Thank you, Lord. Provision, let's say that together. Provision, wealth, and riches. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to be silly here, but just lift your hands to the Lord and receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive it, Lord. Your word right here says provision, wealth, and riches. Okay, just receive that. Verse 3 says wealth, which means more than enough. Hallelujah. Wealth is sufficiency. Amen. Wealth is substance. Go ahead, just make a fist and just receive that. It's substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. It's real. It's substance. And, and then it goes on to say, as righteousness endures forever. Now, this is all from verse 3. Everyone take a deep breath. You know, um, you know people don't deep, take deep enough breaths, I guess, these days. So take a deep breath. Go ahead. Breathe in deep. Thank you, Lord. Just be refilled tonight with the Holy Spirit. Okay, provision, wealth, and riches. There's wealth and riches. Where are these at, according to this verse? Thank you. 
in his house. <laughs> it's in my house. Amen. It's now over there in the sweet by and by, but it's on the ground right now while we're still around. Amen. Do I sound like my brother? Amen. <laughs> it says, wealth and riches are in his house. It says, prosperity is in your house. Okay, turn to someone next to you. Say, it's in your house. It's in your house. Welfare, which is another meaning for that word. It's welfare means health. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name tonight for healing for anyone who needs healing in, in their body tonight, Jesus, that welfare is in their house. Thank you, Lord. Even tonight, we have authority. We are, we are authorized. We drive out sickness and disease out of everyone in this room. Any pain, any ache, any um, abnormality, any uh, weariness, any um, uh, uh, eye situation, any trouble, any Thing with lungs or heart um, or joints. Lord, thank you, Lord. You, Lord, you said there's welfare in our house. Thank you, Lord. Your touch makes us whole. Thank you, Lord. Let your glory um, not only fall in this room, but may your glory just rise up within each one tonight. Let your people feel your glory. Let your people feel good tonight. Feel good. Thank you, Lord, even now that you're lifting heaviness and heavy burdens so that Sometimes uh, something just lingers, and we're just uh, bowed over like that lady in Luke chapter 11. But, Lord, I thank you tonight. We're straightened out. We're standing tall, and the burdens are lifted. Thank you, Lord. We've given it to you. There's welfare. There's well-being in his house. You know, we actually have absolutely nothing to worry about. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Righteousness is in his house. I think we need to say that out loud righteousness is in my house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our children are sealed with a promise. They have a promise from the Most High. They, they are um, untouchable and undamageable. The blood of Jesus covers them. The oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit covers them, and those fiery darts slide right off. Thank you, Lord. You, Lord, are a shield around about them. Eternal salvation is in his house. Can you guys get over this? How great the word of God is. <laughs> that there's so much in, you know, like I think I said earlier, one word. One word changes everything. And okay, so let's talk about verse four. Light arises in darkness. We've all been in a dark room before. Maybe some of us have been... Um, manic depressive or bipolar or depressed. I just pray in Jesus' name for anyone listening to this that you've, if you've been um, given a, a mental illness label that the love of Jesus right now, tonight, will bring light. Light pushes back the darkness. The darkness doesn't even know what happened. So thank you, Lord, tonight for healing people of mental illnesses and um, depression and oppression. The word of God says oppression is far removed from his people. Light arises in darkness for the upright. He is gracious. He's compassionate. He's righteous and in right standing with God. Light arises. We are children of the day. Amen. Um, arise, shine. Isaiah 60 says, arise, shine. Get this. Your light has already come. So much of the body of Christ, they're waiting. God, I'm waiting on you. God, I'm waiting. Your light has come. Amen. Your light has come. <laughs> the answer, he paid the debt. Amen. We have forgiveness. All those words written on that cover of that Bible, their joy. Um, we don't have to wait. He's fulfilled the promise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, let's see. Translated from the kingdom of darkness. Okay, I'm going to wrap up these last verses. Verse 5, favor and well-being. It is well with the man. Shall we read that? It is well with the man. Go ahead and read it. Who? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Justice. You reap what you sow. Amen. You've been sowing good things. It is well with the generous man. It is well with those. It is well with the man who lends. Amen. It is well with those who conduct affairs justly. It is well in your house. Verse 6, you are established. Amen. He will never be shaken. 
Wow. Have you ever been shaken? <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> but Jesus is our anchor. Um, it says, um, the righteous will be remembered forever, but let's, let's just dwell on that first part. He will never be shaken. In Jesus' name, you are steadfast. God says you are immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You are known for integrity and remembered forever. You are unshakable. We will not be moved. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We may feel very weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Yeah. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And I think it was at Paul, he even said, when I am weak, then, I'm, then am I strong. Amen. So we, we are stronger than we think. We are um, better, more, we're better off than we know. <laughs> we're, um, we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. And the word that you have been planting year after year, I look around, many of you have been planting the word year after year after year. There is a great, great crop growing. There is fruit. Um, the Holy Spirit is working and the seeds are being watered. Just expect suddenlies to come. Expect phone calls that will just thrill you and knock your socks off. <laughs> Um, we're in a season of surprises. Lastly, uh, the last couple of verses, peace rules always, verse 7. This is so good. He will not be afraid of bad news. Amen. We had a phone call. Someone says this, someone says that. What does it say there? Verse 7. He will not say it. Read it. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. What, what is it? I think somebody here got this uh, regarding a, a heart situation, and they claim this verse, his heart is fixed. <laughs> Lord, thank you for fixing hearts tonight. His heart is fixed. Why? Because we're trusting in the Lord. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Lord. No fear. We will not forfeit our peace. That's a good place to say amen. We're, our heart is fixed. Verse 8, we're confident and secure. Our heart is established. And here again is, uh, we will not be afraid. We're established. Our heart is steady. We are free of fear. Yep. And I also see in this verse where we're patient. Amen. We're patiently living our life every day. Verse 9, we're generous and prosperous. Amen. Say amen to that. He has given freely to the poor. We want to be givers. His righteousness endures forever, and his horn will be exalted in honor. There's something in that teaching about the horn, but I, I didn't get a chance to um, find out, to reread that and find out more about that. But um, something about the horn of honor. Generous, d distributes freely to the poor. You know, I have a um, whole list here of how to wrap up verse 9. Your testimony is consistent. And uh, lastly, verse 10, I call this the life of victory, verse 10. And uh, let's just look at this again as um, that we have one enemy, the devil. I don't want anyone here tonight thinking like, yeah, I, I want to get those guys, those bad guys, get them good God. <laughs> No, love never fails. So, so a life of victory, the wicked will uh, see it and be angered. Uh, and he'll gnash his teeth. Well, that's going to happen. Melt away in despair. The wicked, um, let's see, the desire of the wicked will perish and come to nothing. And I just close this by saying the enemy is defeated. The kingdom of God has come. And this is the victory that overcomes even your faith. So, wow. It's just amazing um, that we can give a prayer teaching, you know, on one psalm. And uh, just study to show yourself. You know, this is an interesting verse here. You know, we go study to share, show yourself approved unto God. It, but it also says to show yourself. Let, let you know it, that uh, you're approved. Study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of God. So... But anyway, so let's take a step closer, and I, I want to just partake of more, more of uh, the benefits that are from the Word of God. And 
um, be changed from glory to glory. We can be like the pictures I showed at the beginning. We can be a, a person who could never speak a word. We could never say anything out loud and uh, just totally full of fear. But the Word of God transforms us. <laughs> We're renewed in the spirit of our mind. So I pray that we'll leave this place tonight, not just saying we came to church, but I want to say this, that you leave tonight with a confident assurance, knowing it is written. Knowing it is written. All God's people said, Amen.